It's finally time to take the wraps off Intel's brand new CPUs, their new motherboards, the new socket, and everything new that's coming with Alder Lake. But first we're taking a look at the brand new Gigabyte Z690 Aorus Master, one of Gigabyte's flagship boards leading into Alder Lake. So without further ado, let's jump in. These motherboard videos are not reviews, they're just overviews so we can take a bit of a look at what comes in the box and the feature set and everything on the board itself. There's a lot of new stuff with these boards, so I'm going to go into a little bit more detail than usual, showing you guys what's changed between LGA 1200 and 1700. Obviously I'm not going to show 1200 boards because it just doesn't make sense, but showing you everything that is new with LGA 1700 because there is quite a few things that you may have not seen before, but are more familiar for older Intel sockets. So without further ado, let's first off take a look at what's in the box with this brand new board from Gigabyte. All right, ladies and gents, here it is, the Gigabyte Z690 Aorus Master. It's Aorus, not Aorus. All right, can we get that straight? All right, let's get the motherboard out of the way so we can take a closer look at everything that comes in the box with this brand new board for Intel's Alder Lake CPUs. First up, we've got this sheet of stickers with all of that stickery goodness. It may be something you're into. If you're not into it, that's okay. You can leave it in the box or throw it away. Next up, we've got the multilingual installation guide. Now this one is slightly different to what you're used to because this one talks about the new socket retention system with LGA 1700 and DDR5 memory as well and the correct way to install that memory. So if you're not sure how to do this and it's your first time building with this platform, this is definitely something to take a look at. Next up, we've got this little Aorus badge. You know how this badge goes already, guys. Put it on your case, more performance. That's just science, not magic. Next up is the user guide for the motherboard. Now this will talk about overclocking, what all the BIOS features are, and everything you need to get started with this other than that other guide that I just showed previously. It's time to open the first flap, the left flap. All right, what do we got under flap number one? We've got the Wi-Fi antenna for the built-in Wi-Fi 6E and Bluetooth on this motherboard. Next up, we've got five M.2 screws. You heard that right, there's five M.2 slots on this board, which I'm going to be covering in this video. I'm gonna show you the configuration for all of that stuff, so stick around if you're interested in the storage situation with this board. There's also the G connector. This is to plug in all your front panel wires, like your power switch, your power light, your reset button, everything, into a single block to make it easier to plug into your motherboard. There's also this little microphone. This microphone, listens to the acoustics inside of your PC and is like, hey, that's too loud, let's adjust the fan curves. There's also a bunch of SATA or SATA cables for your 2.5 inch SSDs or your spinning rust drives. But given how many M.2 slots are on this board, these might not be useful anymore. Next up is a bunch of thermal probes. Now this will detect the temperature inside of your case and you can also use this to calculate fan curves. And last but not least, there is a four pin 12 volt non-addressable RGB extension cable. Okay, enough about what's in the box of this new board. It's time to unsheath it and take a little bit of a closer look and see what's new with this platform because there's a lot of new stuff going on here. But first, we need to visit our friends over at Peel Corp and see what they've been up to. We've got some nice peels going on here today. Look at that, fresh motherboard. Ooh la la, new platform, I'm excited. You guys better get excited about this stuff too because it's about to get interesting, so let's dive in. First up, we've got the front panel audio header. We've got a three pin, five volt addressable RGB header. We've got a 12 volt, four pin non-addressable RGB header. There's a PWM fan header. There's also two USB 2.0 headers. Now this is typically used for RGB controllers and AIOs and that kind of stuff these days, not so much for connectivity. A reset switch, 
two more PWM fan connectors. There's a TPM 2.0 header, which you do not need to use for Windows 11 with these new CPUs, and the front panel header for all your wires and all your switches to let you know your PC is on. There's a little diagnostic LED array for diagnosing your system. There is six SATA or SATA ports for your 2.5 inch SSDs or your spinning rush drives. There's two Thunderbolt headers. I'm not sure if you need an add-in card for this. There's a USB Type-C front panel header. There's two USB 3.2 front panel headers. They're typically for Type-A ports. There's another PWM fan connector. There's the 24-pin power connector to send juice to your brand new Gigabyte Z690 Aorus Master. There is a postcode LED screen, another 3-pin 5-volt addressable RGB header, and another 4-pin 12-volt RGB header. Next to that, there are four PWM fan connectors. They're labeled as system fan, CPU fan, and CPU optional. And if we scoot on over to the other side of the board, there is two 8-pin EPS power connectors to send juice to your brand new Older Lake CPU, as well as two PWM fan connectors as well. So let's take a look at the PCIe situation on this motherboard for the slot. So the top slot, which is white, most of the Gigabyte boards when it's PCIe Gen 5 will be white. So the top slot is a fully compliant PCIe Gen 5 by 16 slot. However, the two lower slots are PCIe Gen 3, and they're both by four slots. You'll also notice that massive spacing, and that's to account for those huge Aorus GPUs. Much like Intel's previous generation chipsets, the chipset itself is passively cooled. It doesn't require active cooling like X570. But let's take a look at what's going on with the PAL delivery here, because this is where these boards are going to be a bit crazy. This board in particular features a 19 plus 1 plus 2 phase digital VRM setup with 105 amp power stages. So the PAL delivery on these boards is insane. This is like Threadripper levels of power delivery, but for a desktop platform, not an AGDT platform. Let's take a look at LGA 1700 and what's different. So let's open up the socket just to show you what it's like to lift up the retention system. If, you're, if you've been around PCs for a while, this looks familiar. It is quite similar to LGA 1366 and LGA 1356. And if we take a look at the socket here, you can see that the socket is a rectangle shape. It's got 1700 contact pins as opposed to the 1200 that we saw on 10th and 11th gen. So it's physically a much larger socket. The pin density is exactly the same as... You'll also notice there's some locating tabs on the top of the socket and the bottom of the socket, so you put your CPU in the correct way, and that's on the substrate of the CPU itself. The retention system is similar to LGA 1366 and 1356, whereas the top bracket lowers on top of the CPU itself, and the arm pushes down, uh, pushing it completely down and latching the arm underneath the actual retention system itself. So if you've seen any of these older sockets, this will look familiar. However, the hook is the opposite way to those sockets to account for the bigger size of the socket. I hope this all makes sense to you guys, but one thing I have noticed and I have already tested, I did this a few weeks ago, was the mounting system for coolers. What I found is the hole spacing is the same as socket 1366 and 1356. The only thing being here is whether or not your cooler is actually at the correct height to make contact with the IHS, which is something that I'm yet to test. All right, let's flip the board over so you can take a bit of a look at what's going on with the backplate. So it's got a full cover backplate for the motherboard as well. And there's also a backplate on the CPU socket. You'll notice that it's labeled LGA 17XX and LGA 18XX. Hmm. Anyway, because this is a DDR5 board, it obviously has DDR5 RAM slots. It's got four in total supporting up to 128 gigs of DDR5 memory, up to 4,800 megahertz, although, I'm not sure what the XMP 3.0 settings are for this board in particular, but I'm guessing they only talked about the base speed for DDR5 because I've got a couple of DDR5 kits that are much faster than 4800 megahertz, so 
I can't talk about any of that right now. You'll just have to wait, but we will be testing all of that in future videos. All right, let's take a look at what the M.2 situation is on this board. You'll notice there's a huge heatsink that covers most of the M.2 slots here. Well, it covers four of them. And then there's that huge heatsink at the top that covers that top slot. Now this is where the M.2 situation gets quite confusing and interesting. So the top M.2 slot is PCIe Gen 4, the two below it are PCIe Gen 4, and the lower two are PCIe Gen 3. So there's three Gen 4 slots, two Gen 3 slots, no Gen 5 slots whatsoever. The slots are also all labeled, so I'm showing you here that this is saying that this one is connected directly into the CPU. The rest are connected directly into the chipset itself. So I just thought that was worth mentioning. As far as rear IO, we've got a Q flash button, a clear CMOS button, the antenna connectors for the built-in Wi-Fi 6E and Bluetooth. There's USB 3.2 ports galore. There's a display port connector which supports up to 4K 60 Hertz. There's two USB type C ports. There's 10 gigabit ethernet standard on this. It's got 10 gigabit ethernet, which is very, very nice. I do like that. As well as 7.1 digital surround sound with optical and SPDIF outputs and an integrated IO shield. I hope you guys enjoyed seeing our first Z690 video. We've got a few of these boards. Uh, you can probably spot a couple of them on the shelf behind me. And yes, that's why we did the clean up the other week was to make room for all the new motherboards. I haven't put them all on the shelf yet, but we've got boards from everyone. So we'll be doing our usual thing. We'll be doing all of the motherboards we get through to show you guys what your options are. There's a couple of comments I want to make just regarding DDR5 memory as well. We do have a few kits of DDR5, so we will be testing DDR5 versus DDR4 stuff. What you'll notice before I even talk about testing is the high-end DDR4 memory is technically faster than the mid-range DDR5 memory. So uh, I can see that there's gonna be a lot of discussion around that already. We're gonna be talking about this in a video we've got planned. We've got a few boards from some different manufacturers where uh, what they're doing is they're actually making the same board. I hope this makes sense. They're making the same board, the same SKU, but one will be DDR4 version, one will be DDR5 versions. So we'll be doing direct comparisons with those boards to show you what the differences are in performance. I, I'm not sure, I haven't even had a chance to get to that yet, but as I mentioned, we're seeing some boards that have DDR4 or DDR5, but they're the same SKU, they're technically the same board. We've got some boards that are DDR4 already, like this one, for instance, this is the Z690 or Z690 i Aorus, Ultra DDR4, which is an ITX board. This is a pretty interesting board. We, we, <laughs> it's a bit odd for an ITX board. We're gonna show why when we cover this in the video, but I think this one is, is kind of cool because this is a mix between using PCIe Gen 5 and DDR4. It's kind of one of those boards I was talking about in like a transitional board. I think they're making a DDR5 version of this as well, but we don't have it. But we do have lots of ITX boards coming in. I know you guys love to see all the new ITX boards, so we will be covering all of them. We have, literally have all of them. This one will probably be the first one because it's one of the only DDR4 boards that we've got at the moment. So yeah, we'll jump into this one in the next couple days. We've got CPUs, we've got everything, we're all ready to go but there is still an embargo for another week before we can talk about performance and stuff, but we are allowed to show the boards finally. And yeah, as I mentioned, we've got stacks and stacks of boards to show you guys. I, I'm just, I'm just going to put it out there. This stuff is looking pretty cool. Uh, a lot of new stuff that we haven't seen before. And it's always like, you know, when, when a new generation comes out, let's say when 10th or 11th gen came out or Ryzen 3000 came out, PCIe Gen 4, there were like a few new things here and there and whatnot. But I always find that when it's a jump from a different generation in RAM, that's when stuff starts to really get interesting because there's a transitional period that we're gonna see where the boards are either gonna have DDR4 or DDR5 and we're just gonna get some real wacky motherboards over the next year or so, or however long Older Lake lasts. In terms of pricing and availability for these new Z690 boards, I think pre-orders open when this embargo lifts for CPUs and motherboards and everything. But as far as how much this is gonna cost in Australia and in the US, well, basically for all of the boards that we've got, 
I don't know at this point in time of filming this video. So we're literally filming this on the day of the embargo being lifted because we've been working on heaps of other stuff in the background too. I can't really comment on pricing because I just don't know at this point in time. But as usual with these motherboard videos, I usually add that stuff in the description and in a pinned post. So I'll come back and add that when we know. All right guys, hope you enjoyed it. Hope you learned something. I'm your boy Nick with Gear Seekers. You peek, we seek, but stick around. We've got some cinematic things to look at with this brand new board. Thanks for watching.